What if I told you that the $20,000 per month prompt engineering job you saw advertised is a complete myth? In fact, it could be one of the most expensive mistakes you make this year. Stick around, because in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to save you some serious dollars and countless hours. Welcome back to our channel, Gen AI Learniverse. If you've been following our 50 plus Gen AI project series, you know we've been building real world AI applications. But today, we're taking a detour to discuss something crucial, prompt engineering, and more importantly, the truth about it. In this video, we're going to cut through the hype and give you the real scoop on prompt engineering, show you what prompt engineering really is, and give you the foundational knowledge you need to start using this skill effectively. Whether you're looking to enhance your current job, start a new career, or just understand AI better, this video is your first step toward genuine expertise in prompt engineering. I've been working on multiple Gen AI projects for different clients, and the concept and basic framework that we're going to talk about in this video was sufficient for working on small to mid-level Gen AI projects. Here's what we'll cover. What is prompt engineering? Myth versus truth in prompt engineering? Key components of prompt engineering? Types of prompting techniques? A framework for structuring your prompts? I'll also share a useful tip that applies to any prompt to help you get better results. And finally, I'll provide some resources for learning prompt engineering. Let's start with what prompt engineering really is. Prompt engineering is the art and science of crafting effective inputs for AI models like ChatGPT or Claude to get the best possible outputs. Think of it like learning how to ask the right questions to get the most insightful answers. The quality of the response you get depends on how clearly you ask your question. This is the essence of prompt engineering, being precise, clear, and thoughtful in how you interact with AI. If I would like to simplify it further, think about Google search. The better the search string, the better the result you will get. Now, let's bust some myths. Those ads claiming you can make $20,000 a month just by learning prompt engineering? They're not just misleading, they're potentially harmful. Here's why. With the rise of AI, prompt engineering has become a hot topic. And yes, it can help you improve the outputs of generative AI models, but it's not a standalone skill that will make you a fortune. Those ads? They're selling you a dream that doesn't match reality. The reality is, prompt engineering is just one piece of the puzzle when working with AI. There's much more to building and deploying AI solutions, like understanding the underlying models, fine-tuning them, and integrating them into applications. So, next time you see such ads, Think about it, do some research, and only subscribe to the course if it holds real value. But don't worry, learning prompt engineering is still incredibly valuable. It can improve your productivity, help you create better AI-driven content, and even enhance your AI projects. So, let's dive into the practical side of prompt engineering without the unrealistic promises. Remember this, prompt engineering isn't a get-rich-quick scheme, it's a get-smart-quick opportunity. Now let's break down the key components of prompt engineering. The key components of prompt engineering are understanding the model, clear communication, context setting, specific instructions, and iterative refinement. Now, let's understand each component individually with examples. Different AI models have different capabilities and limitations. Knowing what your chosen model can and can't do is crucial. For instance, if you're using ChatGPT 3.5 for text generation and DALI 3 for image creation, you wouldn't ask GPT to create an image or DALI to write a story. Similarly, if you need help with complex coding tasks, you might opt for a model that specializes in programming rather than one focused on general text generation. Understanding these differences and specializations helps you use each tool effectively and get the best results for your particular needs. Second component is clear communication. Just like talking to a person, clarity is key. You should be clear about what exactly you are looking for. Ambiguous prompts lead to ambiguous results. For example, instead of using, give me some marketing ideas, better to use, provide three social media post ideas for Instagram to promote a new line of eco-friendly reusable water bottles targeting health-conscious millennials. Similarly, instead of using, create a character, better to use, Describe a 30-year-old female detective from New York City, including her physical appearance, personality traits, and a unique quirk that sets her apart from other detectives. As you can see in these examples, I am trying to be specific and clear in my communication based on my needs. Third component is context setting. Providing relevant background information helps the AI understand the scope and intent of your request. Let's take a look at a couple of examples with and without context. 
In the first request, the AI has almost no information to work with. It might generate a generic email about any topic, to any recipient, for any purpose. The result would likely be vague and not useful for any specific situation. However, in the second request, the AI has detailed context. It knows the purpose of the email, which is offering services and proposing a meeting, the recipient, which is a potential client in the tech industry, the sender's role, the specific service needed, which is a modern sleek logo for an app, and the desired tone, in this case a friendly yet professional tone. Similarly, in the second example, the first request might result in a generic green logo. The second provides crucial information about the company's specific industry, target audience, and desired style, enabling the AI to generate ideas for a much more relevant and effective logo design. The fourth and final component is iterative refinement. When we craft prompts for an AI model, it's common to go through multiple attempts. Each attempt helps us adjust the approach based on the results we receive. This process of tweaking and improving your prompts is called iterative refinement. This should be started with a clear goal. Begin by defining what you want the model to produce. For example, do you want the AI to generate a summary, create a story, or answer a question? Once you have a clear goal, write your first version of the prompt. And don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. For example, you can start with a simple prompt, summarize the article. Third step is to analyze the output. Look at the AI's response. Does it meet your expectations? Is the response too detailed? Are important details missing in the response? Does the response cater your target audience? Once you analyze the output and you know what is missing, you can refine your prompt accordingly. Based on the output, adjust your prompt. You might add more details, clarify instructions, or change the format of your request. For example, you can use summarize the article in three bullet points or summarize the article based on the financial data available. Now, run the new prompt and see how the model responds. Does it improve? Repeat the process if needed, making small changes each time till the time you are happy with the results. Now that we've covered the basics, let's take things a step further by discussing the different types of prompting techniques you can use when working with AI models. These techniques can drastically affect the outputs you get, so understanding them is key to mastering prompt engineering. Let's take a closer look at each of these prompting techniques individually. Zero-shot prompting is when you ask the AI to complete a task without giving it any examples. As you can see, in these examples we are asking AI to give the output without giving it any examples or specific instructions on style or content. In this technique, the AI generates an answer based purely on its pre-existing knowledge. This technique can be used for tasks such as creative writing, like writing a story or generating dialogue, where we want to give the AI more freedom. It can also be applied to tasks like language translation or sentiment analysis, where we need a, we need a clear and direct response. In one-shot prompting, you give the AI one example before asking it to perform a similar task. For example, you might show the AI a short paragraph summarizing a news article, then ask it to summarize another article in the same way. This helps the AI understand the style you're aiming for. This technique can be used for tasks such as email drafting, social media posts, recipe writing, and more, where providing one example helps guide the AI to produce a similar output with the right tone, format, or style. Few-shot prompting involves providing the AI with a few examples to guide its output. In this case, the examples show how to combine genre, setting, and character elements into a cohesive writing prompt. The model can then use this pattern to generate a new prompt with the given elements. Few-shot prompting is useful when you want your model to follow a specific style, format, or tone, or when you're looking for consistent outputs. It can be especially effective in tasks like technical documentation, story generation, and math problem solving, where a clear pattern or structure needs to be maintained. This technique involves asking the AI to think through a problem step by step. For example, instead of just asking for the answer to a math problem, you could ask the AI to explain its reasoning process first. This can lead to more accurate and thoughtful responses. Chain of thought prompting is effective for tasks requiring reasoning, logic, or multi-step solutions. The model thinks aloud, so to speak, and breaks the problem down into manageable steps before arriving at the answer. Logical deduction, multi-step reasoning, moral dilemmas are some examples where this technique can be used to generate the best responses. Now, let's look at a framework you can use to structure your prompts. The framework consists of five main components, role, context, 
task, format, and tone. The first component is role, which means defining the role you want the AI to assume. The second component is context, which involves providing the necessary background information. The third component is task, where you clearly state what you want the AI to do. The fourth component is format, specifying how you want the output to be structured. The fifth and final component is tone, which indicates the desired tone or style of the response. If you want the AI to respond better, here's a tip. Add the following line at the end of your prompt. Please ask me any clarification questions that will help you provide the best possible response and allow me to answer them before you proceed. Now, I know we've covered a lot today and you might be wondering how to keep refining your skills. The best way to learn prompt engineering is by experimenting. Try different prompts and understand how to structure them based on your needs. Here are some useful resources to check out in the meantime. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Stay curious, keep experimenting, and most importantly, keep learning.